Welcome to African News Roundup. Starting off this segment, a fire at a military ammunition depot in Chad sent a series of explosions blasting into the night sky near the international airport in the capital in Jamena, where President Mohamed Idris Deby Into says they have been deaths and injuries. The fire began in N'Djamena Guji's district late on Tuesday and there had been huge explosions according to the Foreign Affairs Minister. Now, without providing specific numbers, the president had stated that there had been fatalities and injuries from the fire and three injured people were seen on the street according to a resident of the neighborhood around the depot. Two of them were taken to the hospital on a motorcycle. Images of spent artillery shells that had fallen in the areas were shared on social media. Now, the military should not conduct operations or procedures near civilians and it is completely inappropriate. This has now resulted in losses of civilians' lives and properties and the government needs to do better to investigate this immediately and find a solution. Still on African news, Congolese and Burundian people pile onto a tractor and cross a four kilometer stretch of road flooded by Lake Tangankia to reach the Kambivira border post between the Democratic Republic of Congo and Burundi. For more than six months, passengers have been charged between 2,000 and 5,000 in their currency to travel in heavy trucks or land cruiser jeeps to the border. For those with less financial means, canoes costing 2,000 FC offer a solution. Now, according to a Congolese trader, the road to the border is underwater, so they cross by canoes or farm tractors. Sometimes they fall into the water and risk drowning. In other news, they're asking the state to help with the custom road. He also stated that the women are suffering from infections and they are desperate. Now, through a spokesperson, the provincial government of South Kivu acknowledged the effects of the rising water levels at the border, but a bridge is being built to enable frequent crossings. Since Burundi has closed its borders with Rwanda, the Kamvinvira border continues to be the primary entry point for many travelers to Bujumbura while the provincial government looks for a solution to this issue. Nevertheless, in order to prevent death and a high risk of illness among the general public, this needs to be done as soon as possible. And finally, on African news, more than 200 protesters have been arrested in Kenya's capital, Nairobi, in ongoing protests against proposed tax hikes in a finance bill that is due to be tabled in the parliament. Civil society groups say that despite the arrest demonstrations and a planned sit-down outside the parliament buildings will still continue, certain tax have been imposed on the people, which is the reason for this protest. The opposition leader, Ralia Odinga, urged MPs to scrutinize the bill and vote to remove clauses that will burden the poor. According to a statement in early June, it is worse than the one of 2023, an investment killer and a huge milestone around the necks of millions of poor Kenyans who have hoped that the tears they shed over taxes last year would see the government lessen the tax burden in 2024. Now, weekly protests, according to the opposition leader, Kalonzo Musioka, would continue if the finance bill is approved as written. The bill will be discussed by lawmakers beginning on Wednesday and a vote is planned for Monday. Also, 1.5 housing tax on gross income for salaried individuals was introduced by the finance law of last year despite initial worries that it would burden Kenyans already struggling with high cost of living even more. Additionally, the petroleum product VAT tax was doubled by the law from 8% to 16%. Now, since the arrested protesters are merely demonstrating their rights, a thorough survey regarding this bill should be conducted and the protesters released. And that's all I have for you on African News Roundup. Until next time, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.